October 6, 1939. The last Polish armies finally surrender before the overwhelming advance of the Wehrmacht, and the double attack carried out by the Soviet Union in mid-September. However, for the Germans, the war, far from over, has only just begun. After the declaration of war by France and Great Britain on Germany on September 3, due to the attack on Poland, the German army now had to face a new challenge for which it was still considered to be unprepared. Many generals had accepted the attack on Poland because it was a relatively simple task and easy to execute, but facing France and Britain again was another matter entirely. In any case, they had to obey the order of the German leader, and prepare for the simultaneous attack on France, Belgium, and Holland. Although the first plan in which the German high command was working, proposed a frontal attack against Belgium and Luxembourg, similar to that of the First World War, Everything changed on February 17 when Manstein was able to have a meeting with Hitler. In this meeting, the future marshal convinced Hitler that the best way to defeat the Allied coalition was to carry out an attack that curved northwest from the German border until it reached the Atlantic coast. It was basically just the opposite of what they had tried in World War I, in which said curve had taken a southwesterly direction. Now, 25 years later, it might be possible to do it with the greater speed and mobility that the new motorization of the army offered. For this plan to be successful, multiple very fast panzer divisions with a lot of firepower were needed, which were capable of penetrating through the Ardennes, and after crossing the Meuse River and breaking the front at St. Quentin, they could reach the Atlantic coast at lightning speed. This maneuver was to be completed in a very few days, while most of the French and British divisions were engaged in another diversionary attack, which the Germans were to launch in Holland and Belgium. In addition, they had to be fast so as not to give their enemy time to take countermeasures, and with them contain Army Group A, which would be in charge of carrying out this incursion. On the day of the attack on France, this being May 10, 1940, this group of armies had a total of 45 divisions, seven of them being panzers. These seven divisions would occupy the next position in the great wedge of German penetration into northeastern France. First, Rommel's 5th and 7th Panzer Divisions, integrated into General Hermann Hoth's 15th Army Corps, would be located on the right flank of the wedge. The center would be occupied by the 6th and 8th Panzer Divisions, integrated into the 41st German Army Corps, under Reinhardt's orders. And finally, and going to what interests us in this program, the 19th Army Corps under Guderian's orders, with the 1st, 2nd, and 10th Panzer Divisions, together with the Großdeutschland Regiment, would be located on the left flank, right on the south side of the wedge. The attack began on May 10, 1940, and everything went exactly as the Germans had planned. In just three days, the three army corps that we have just named crossed the Ardennes forest and advanced about 130 kilometers until they reached the Meuse River. From the 5th Panzer Division which was on the right flank of the wedge, to the 10th which was further south, it was about 50 kilometers, this being the width of the German break in the French defenses. Despite this important advance during the first days of the operation, everything was still to be done. Now, the key to the whole plan was to be able to cross the Meuse River, and to be able to continue advancing towards the English Channel. It was at this time that one of the most important battles of this operation was fought, known as the Battle of Sedan. It should be noted that on this date the French had already begun to mobilize, and were sending reinforcements to the area at full speed. However, they believed that the German plan, as they had done in World War I, would be to turn southwest, and head towards Paris, or to the rear of the Maginot Line. But as we already know, that was not what the Germans had planned. It should be noted that at that time the French Atlantic coast was about 250 kilometers from there, and the French did not believe that the Germans could complete that journey in just a few days, as they ended up doing. On May 13, 14, 15, and 16, the Battle of Sedan took place, in which Guderian's units were able to cross the Meuse River and establish a powerful bridgehead. So from there, his panzer divisions began to gain ground to the south and mainly to the west in a breakthrough led by the 6th Panzer Division. It was also from the 15th and 16th when the other two army corps began to advance clearly and forcefully in a westerly direction, 
after having crossed the Meuse River further north through Givet, Fiume, and Ravenne. So for this day 16, the German intentions were already clearer and the French began to send reinforcements to the area, in an attempt to stop the offensive of Army Group A. Although on the 16th it was Guderian's panzer divisions that were in the vanguard of the attack, being at the gates of St. Quentin, on the 17th Rommel's 7th Division managed to make a breakthrough and position itself at the same height. At this time Guderian was regrouping the 1st and 10th Panzer Divisions, which had been left behind protecting the southern flank of the wedge after the Sedan breakthrough. Once this defense could be occupied by other German infantry divisions coming from the rear, the Panzer Divisions could be sent west to continue their rush towards the English Channel. The Allied coalition had begun to gradually withdraw from Belgium, but the bottleneck of its units made this maneuver much slower than desired. On the other hand, the French had begun to reinforce the banks of the Somme River to prevent the Germans from advancing towards Paris, but due to the speed of the German advance, they had not been able to reinforce the territory between the Germans and the coast, which it was just the one that the Panzer divisions were attacking. Thus, and because of this, the best option left for the French was to cut off the German penetration with the pincer attack from the north and another from the south. However, most of their armored forces with which to carry out this counterattack were not anywhere near the site, and only limited attacks could be made. The first of these occurred on May 19 against Guderian's southern flank, in the vicinity of Léon. This French attack was fought off by the 10th Panzer Division without any trouble, while the 1st, 2nd, 6th, and 7th Panzer Divisions continued their march towards the coast at full speed. It was specifically the day after this French counterattack, when Guderian's 1st and 2nd Panzer Divisions made a spectacular advance from Peron to the French Atlantic coast of about 90 kilometers. With this, they managed to complete their encirclement maneuver, and isolated hundreds of thousands of French, British, and Belgian soldiers. During the following day, this being May 21st, the French organized another counterattack, this time against Rommel's 7th Panzer Division, in what became known as the Battle of Arras. Although Rommel was able to repel this attack, this French action raised many alarms in the German high command, which made them see that they had to advance more cautiously. And it is precisely that one of the biggest fears of the German high command was that their enemy would reorganize and carry out a great counterattack at the height of Cambrai, with which they would section all their panzer divisions that were in the vanguard of their penetration. Thus, the advance of the panzer divisions towards the main ports on the French Atlantic coast was delayed. During the days 26, 27, and 28 of May, the Allies began a great withdrawal of all their units that were isolated, and they began to go towards the coast with the hope of being evacuated by sea. In this situation Guderian's panzer divisions no longer played any role, as they settled near the Pas de Calais to regroup and re-equip, and to prepare for the next advance against the rear of the Maginot Line. On the other hand, and not being the subject of this video, the siege on the Allied troops isolated in Dunkirk ended on June 4, with the evacuation of more than 330,000 combatants, somewhat clouding the final execution of this successful operation. In any case, and as we have seen in this program, Guderian's 19th Army Corps was the most important of all in this breakout and encirclement operation, leading the German advance wedge at all times. As we saw a few weeks ago, Guderian also led the advance towards Moscow, and played a decisive role, which if you are interested you can see in the link that he left in the description. Thank you all for being part of this community, and especially the sponsors who make this possible. Subscribe and share this program if you liked it, and we'll see each other here as always, next Thursday and Sunday. See you soon.